let's get our paint on. Hey everybody, happy Thursday. This is Dallas Kemp, Privateer Press Painting and Terrain Manager, hanging out and getting ready to do some painting. And today, as usual, we have Jackson, our marketing manager. Hello, Jackson. How's it going, Dallas? It's doing great, going great, doing great, going great. And of course, the, the man, the myth, the legend, the hidden disembodied voice of the sweetest man in video audio recording history, Tony Konachek. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Tony. That's what they all said back. They said, good morning, Tony. Pew, pew. So as you can see up on my screen, I got myself some murder crows up in there. And they are coming along pretty quick. I'll show you all these. I'm sure you want to see all these, right? So that's one of them. He's all standing there all like broody. McCroson and we got Stocky McCroson and we got Squatty McCroson. That's the unit leader actually. Looking all grim and determined. So let's put some paint on these bad boys. Let's put some paint on these dudes, dudes, dudes. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab some of my Battlefield Brown. I'm going to get a bunch of this out because i got to paint a whole unit of these guys. And put that lid back on. And I'm going to add a bit of mixing medium to this. make a wash here so this is just some battlefield brown some mixing medium and bed water and I'm just gonna wash so what I got going on here is you can see he's got this padded leather and this was painted with uh, gun core brown um, so I'm gonna make a wash and I'm gonna wash that because all those little triangle diamond pattern stuff that I don't want to sit there and blend all that I'm just gonna wash that so Mix, 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 mix my wash of Battlefield Brown. So it's nice and washy. Yeah, I know you guys a, got questions. Yeah, do you want to talk a little, little bit about uh, your color palette that you're going to be using today? So today, primarily, um, we'll see how far we go, but I will be working with Battlefield Brown and some brown ink. Um, probably switch around to some Beast Hide, some Minoth White Highlight, Minoth White Base, Exile Blue, Rucksack Tan, as always, Thamar Black, Mar White. Um, if we get to his little rippity wraps here, he's got some, he's got some of these uh, wraps around his legs. Those will be done with a uh, Crick's Bane Highlight and Great Coat Gray. Um, and then the parts that's already painted, I've already painted the metals. Um, they're painted in uh, cold steel. And then I did a uh, shadow of Thamar black mixed with coal black. And then I added a little bit more Thamar black and did some dark lining and some, you know, dotted in his eye sockets and stuff like that. For his uh, red cloth, that's that splash of blood red before he strikes. Um, classic vampire look going on here. Um, I used scorn red mixed with sanguine base added exile blue for a shade and then went up into Kato red highlight for the highlights on it. It looks really nice and dramatic. And then we can talk about the black later. If you want, if anybody wants to know about the black, we can talk about the black later. So let's get our wash on. So real thin wash. I'm just going to start painting this over our hammerfall khaki. Just wash that right into it. I'm sorry, not Hammer Fall Keggy, Gun Court Brown. And this was what just, wash color was that? It was just Battlefield Brown mixed with some mixing medium and some water just to make a wash. And this will just help me establish my shadow on this um, 
these leather areas very quickly. And then we'll use some brown ink on the next step to really bring this leather up into, bring this leather to life. All right, that layer's done. Let's do another layer on another dude. So Dallas Carl would like to know, why don't you use a wet palette? Why do I not use a wet? Um, I use it when it's appropriate. Um, for two brush blending, it tends to thin the paints a little too much for me. Um, for uh, general two brush blending purposes, it thins the paint too much. Because with two brush, you don't want the paint super thin. Um, and that's what a wet palette does. It makes the paints a little too thin. But if I was wet blending, if I was doing straight wet blending, I'll bust out my wet palette for that. Just painting some battlefield brown. Looks like we got, looks like marketing manager Jackson has been called away on a super secret prime directive mission from Upper Brass. So he is bouncing out and being replaced by the ever wonderful and beautiful Mr. John Swinkles. Oh, he likes me. <laughs> He's the number two man. I'm never, I'm never number two. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a number two thing. It's not a number two beard. That's a... Go be a secret agent. No pressure, Dallas. Ed Burrell just joined. Ed Good Burrell chat. checking in. Yay. Hi, Ed. Ed's here to get his paint on, just like everybody else. What's everybody painting today? Let's all skip work and go paint. Weedly, 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 wash. And just wash, 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 wash. This is just the Battlefield Brown wash going right over top of our Gun Corps Brown base coat. Just establishing a darker tone. These guys are going to be pretty. The inside of this, I want this. I want this leather to be pretty dark. Um, and like even the ropes look pretty light right now. Those are just rucksack tan. Um, it all looks pretty light right now, but I want. Eventually, I want this all dark um, because I want that red to be the striking feature. Like I'm imagining these guys like hiding in the night. You know, they're they're the murder crows, right? So they're they're stalking their prey in the dark, and then suddenly the last thing you're, the last thing the vi the victim sees is the flash of red, and they know the murder crow has come. When I saw the concept art for these, I you know saw them as a crow man, but they didn't have any color on them, so I just imagine them to be different shades of dark colors maybe some purples and blues so mm -hmm. i'm kind of i'm very surprised and delighted by uh, how much color you managed to get in there while while not losing that creepy dark feel yeah i mean that's the that's the goal right is the i mean you gotta have color to make them stand out and give them life but they still gotta look creepy and dark without being muddy and boring so it's all about for this, it's all about desaturating the color, right? Um, I gave in my browns, I desaturated. I kind of took a lot of the color out of those. And Dallas, so, do you know how many models are in this unit? Is it is it 10 or is it uh, six? It's a six man unit. That's what I thought. Yeah. So you got your, uh, and the models, I just brought one of each model up to show. So I got the leader. Meow. And of course, Stocky McCroson, and then the uh, standy guy. This is my, I like this one. I like that profile that this guy has. Like he's, he is just kind of uh, static, 
But there's something about him. He's very Nosferatu. He's got, yeah, he's got a lot of attitude. Oh, personality. Yeah. That dude oozes the tude. Oozes the tude. I mean, I almost feel like we need sound effects. Like we should be like a Saturday or a... A, a, fo a Foley artist? We need a Foley artist. That'd be amazing. But I'm talking like a, like we need to be like one of those uh, daytime drive, like shock jock radio yeah, shows. Yeah. Somebody in this building has to be able to beatbox. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, not it. Guys, uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, so every night I come home and my woman, she's just like, Rah, 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 rah. You know what I'm talking about, guys? <laughs> Whackety, schmackety, do. Whackety. All right, so Roy was asking uh, where he can, where, when he can find these guys, and the answer is they will pre-release it, lock and load, and then most of the Grimkin uh, models will be available uh, a little later in July for general release. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Soon is the answer. Soon the murder crows will come for you. For they come in the night. You changing up your color? I'm not changing up my color. Uh, that might be a little thin for what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to make another blurk of some Battlefields browns. And I'm going to add some brown ink. And this is going to richen this up. And Dallas, that's actually probably a good uh, time to point out the fact that, like, no mix ever stays perfect. Perfect. You can you can add water, add more paint as needed. I I mean, yeah. I mean, like, everybody's like, oh, what's the ratio you use for this? And sometimes you just you can change it. Like, it's, there there is no perfect mix, right? Like, um, even dropper bottles, like the the brown ink or any dropper bottle. Like, if I told you two drops, but my 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 hole on my dropper bottle is say a little bigger just from manufacturing variances or it's dried up a little bit and the, the dropper is a little small like there's always variances and so i don't like close enough is good enough when it comes to painting in my eyes like so i'm not real concerned about precise mixes close enough is good enough close enough is good enough Let's add a little Thamar Black. Just a touch of Thamar Black. We're going to darken this up. This is going to be the deep shadows on my Murder Crows leather paddy bits. We're just going to use a little touch. Doop. Just darken that up more. Maybe a little bit more. See, like, even this recipe, I'm making this up. I'm just like, all right, I need a dark, desaturated leather color. I'm just making this up. Just kind of going, you know what? It's all about the end result. Oh, yeah, I like what this is doing now. Add a little more black. And a little more black. See how much darker that is? Now, since this other color was washed over the top, it kind of tones the whole element. This is going to be much more controlled. Wash, and I'm just going to paint this into the, the deep crevices of the padded leather and not try to get it on the top surfaces. So I'm going to use a super thin brush. Just draw some little lines, letting the paint flow. right into those crevices. Just like so. This will just give it more definition. And then we're also, once that dries, we're going to put some overall shadows on that cloth as well. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to blend a wash. 
Dun, dun, dun. And then, Tony, if I'm not mistaken, if people want to see even more like tips and tricks for getting browns and leathers, tomorrow's their day, right? Tomorrow's a day, yeah. We got uh, Dallas with a new P3 Presents uh, painting up some khaki drab on the retribution model um, that we painted the Mage Hunter green on last week. Oh, I like that color. If I get a little extra spooshed up somewhere where I don't want it. It's what that second clean brush is for. Right here, I'm just going to kind of blend that. I'm just kind of painting this back side of this leg fully in this color. And I'm going to use my second clean brush to kind of bring that around to the front. Kind of create a little broad shadows. Dallas, is it possible for you to turn that to the camera a little bit? Sure, sorry about that. I was trying to see the back side of his leg. And this, you know, painting these little lines. You know what I'm going to tell you, folks. You know what I'm going to tell you. Patience, practice, and perseverance. It just takes a little bit of those three things and you will be on your road to painting freedom. Oh yeah, this guy's looking good now. And for those of us who, or those of you who are just joining us, uh, Dallas is painting up uh, some of the murder crows from the new Grimkin faction that is pre-releasing at Lock and Load, which is July 14th through the 16th. And then they'll be available for general release a little bit later in July. And these guys are dope looking. This is, yeah, this is the first time I'm seeing the actual miniature. You haven't seen these yet? I have not seen oh. these yet. Can I come to my desk more often? I hide, then, I hide everything at my desk. And then Dallas Martin's asking, uh, with the P3 paints, can you make any color and wash without losing the pigment of the paint? If you can, how can you make paints into a wash? I just did it. All right. So if you missed it, um, basically this video will be up later so you can review it. But yeah, basically it's just a you know, case of thinning the paints. And yes, they do hold their pigment really well. Yeah. Uh, Play three paints have a very high pigment concentration. Um, probably the highest pigment concentration on the market. Um, I mean, it's really damn high. Uh, well, all I did was add mixing medium and some water and I just made a wash. Um, if you feel like you need a little more zazz, I like to add some inks to that because inks are real pigment heavy. So by adding a little ink to it, you can, you can bring that pigmentation up. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like the producer Tony Konachek is writing me a note. Oh, man, it's a note for him. I thought it was going to be all cool and get like a note or something. So I darkened that up. Now we can move to the next guy. And then Dallas, why why the mixing medium instead of just water? Is it to maintain a consistency or? Uh, yeah, get that stickiness. A little stickiness. How's it get that uh, stick to the... Stick to the crevices feel. So there you go, Ryan. It makes the paint more grabby. That too, Carl. It can help it from, from spreading too thin yeah. and, and getting patchy. So yes, exactly. Yeah, it's sticky. I guess I should have defined sticky, huh? Yeah keeps it in one place it, like with just water you're going to get uh bathtub rings um as they are technically technically known in the painting world um and if you've ever seen them you know exactly what i'm talking about um you don't want bathtub rings not good for your paint jobs um so buying a little mixing medium helps it stay where you want it makes it sticky i think i think out of the the poses for that uh, unit. I think that one's my favorite. The you like Crouchy Guy? Over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. The other one definitely has a lot of attitude, but he just, he looks like he's going to stab, stab somebody. Like, he could totally be on, like, Eris 2's 
uh, we could take airs two off of her little chimney bit and he would be right at home on top of the little chimney bit. Oh, absolutely. Like some kind of creepy crow gargoyle thing. Mm -hmm. He just, yeah, it looks like he's waiting, hanging out on a ledge or something, just biding his time till his target comes in range. And just chilling there like, I am the knight. <laughs> Who, somebody came by my desk and looked at him and said that he would look cool on top of a lamppost. Oh, who was that? Which I thought was a really good idea. Like, I was imagining, like, an Iron Kingdom's lamppost. And he's, like, on top and, like, some, you know, some rich, like, uh, uh, dude in Lale who's, like, a, just a really, just a bad dude. He's, like, walking along late one night uh, on, on, on the business of debauchery. And then just, ah, ah. And then the flash of red. <laughs> Poof. Gone taken by the murder crows because the murder crow comes in the night boom 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 knocking this out Dallas these are studio models correct yeah these are studio models these are not mine these are what you'll see on the box can't do a bad job I'm totally not gonna paint that part don't tell Matt but what's cool is even if these are studio models there's there's always chances to fix mistakes so mistakes are just part of painting painting mentors is a fine art of correcting one's mistakes That's where the patience comes in and the perseverance. And I mean, like, like, I mean, I'm just washing this on here. So like, you know, even our studio model wash is a very useful and quick tool. And you can see how I'm washing this, right? It's like, I'm not, I'm not just glurping the paint on, right? That's like tabletop wash. And I use that for like my home stuff, but for these, like I'm, I'm using a much more controlled um, application of the wash just to make sure I'm just getting it in the places I really need it. And, um, and then of course, using my clean brush to remove it from anywhere that I get a little heavy handed or careless. I can clean that up very quickly and move on. It's a very uh, fine sweat. controlled movements. Yeah. But it's still a wash. Like, I'm still just washing the miniature. Wash is just a technique. And there's many different ways to apply the technique. I appreciate that, Stefan. Yeah, our, our concept artists and our modelers did a really great job on this faction. Oh, I don't... Yeah, I agree. They're definitely a lot of my, a lot of really good sculpts, concepts in this faction. All right. I think I've about got all the dark leather I want. And this really toned all that leather down. It's going to make them, really give them that really, really dark creepy look but we're gonna go one step further so I'm gonna switch over to a little umbral umber and Thamar black no battlefield brown on this one so Dallas I'm not sure if you know or not but uh, do you do you recall how how the Grim can make the murder crows, like how they, how someone ends up becoming one of these guys. Oh my God. I don't actually, I don't know that. I haven't read their entry. Cause so for example, well, like some of the ones face. that I, that I know off the top of my head is, uh, the hollow men, for example, are deserters, right? So if you desert your post and uh, they get you, they turn you into hollow man. Um, Somebody and... text Pagani. Tell him get in this live stream. 
I, I think he's working on CID stuff right now. Um, but basically, the the concept behind the army in general, right, is that they 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 represent being the scary things that go bump in the night. You know, they're the they're the boogeymen. So when parents in the Iron Kingdoms tell you know their children to eat their vegetables and things like that, otherwise the you know imps will get you. Wait, are you this saying if the, I don't eat my Brussels sprouts, I'm gonna become a murder crow? Or, or some other kind of imp or horrible Grimkin, yes. No Brussels sprouts from me. You might become a piggyback. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, no, I don't want that one. I want to be a murder crow. But basically, each of the different types of Grimkin represent those types of things. Like those, like, you shouldn't ought to have done that. Now you're going to be punished by becoming this horrible monster. Yeah, it's and sins. it's sucking for the rest of existence ever. for sins, right? It basically. So this is my Umbral Umber Thamer Black, and it's really black. And I'm just going to put this in some of the deepest lines to create a little more contrast and a little darker leather on this guy. Like right between his legs, his legs are touching. I want a really deep shadow in there. And then the back side of his leg. Oh, Carl, we'll 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 have stuff for Halloween. Don't don't you worry about that. Oh man, this yeah, this faction would love a, some Halloween stuff, wouldn't it? I mean, let's be honest. How many factions do we have that are just straight up Halloween? Circle is totally Halloween in my eyes. It's like blood trees, and it's a there's a tree that eats people. Werewolves. Werewolves. There, wolf. Legion. That's terrifying. Well, Blind. and then of course the easy one is Crix, right? Crix, I mean, yeah. Nightmare Empire. Hail Toric. That wasn't even the first on my list. Like, oh my gosh, blood trees, blood trees. That is nightmare fuel. Oh, and those mannequins? Yeah. Yeah, those those things always creep me out. I don't know why. Yeah, but I'm talking about like wormwood and like the gallows girls. Like that stuff's straight horror. Circle ain't the kind of hippies you buy patchouli from at the market. Well, maybe the Tharn. The Tharn might roll around in that stuff. Those guys eat your hearts! It doesn't mean they can't roll around in patchouli. It doesn't That's mean they true. can't smell awful while they do it. Oh my god, now I'm just going to imagine every Tharn smells like patchouli. Alright, like I said, this is just a really dark color and I'm just kind of getting it in the deepest recesses and that's and umbral umber and thamar black and thamar you know? black and that's making my that's making that leather super dark Doop. Shannon, that's a that's a great suggestion. And if people have other suggestions like that, like you know, like uh, doing gems or how to do various things, always feel free to ask. Like uh, we we will work in Dallas working on or Brendan working on all the things eventually. Like there is an exhaustive list of topics we can cover, and we'll never be done. Yeah, I can't get to everything every week, but I I, I would love to hear what people really want, right? 
just tell me. Just tell me what you want. If we get enough people saying the same thing, we'll definitely make it work. And all that stuff is on my list. I have I have a big list of videos I want to show. I have such wonderful sights to show you. I'm surprised no one's asking about that news from last week. About the piggy purple ink and the other Grimkin and the colors. colors to the colors? Yeah. So for those that might have missed uh, Dallas's stream from last week, uh, there are at least six new paints coming seven. to the seven. If you count the ink, yes. Uh, there are seven new colors coming to the Formula 3 paint line in the not-too-distant future. Uh, there's a Grimkin uh, faction set, which has six of them, and then, as he was mentioning, the piggy purple ink on top of that. Y'all want to see one of them? I showed off the piggy purple ink. I'll show another one. Who wants to see one? Show another one. Let's see another one. I, yeah, I don't care whether they want to or not. I want to see it. <laughs> show them that. Uh... Okay, so I got, I got, I got the six here, and of course I got the uh, piggy purple ink right here by me. And where's that piggy purple ink at? There it is. What do you think, John? Which, which one of these? Which one of these should be shown? Oh. You know that name right there. I think that's the one. Because you mentioned that one last time, but I think people need to see it. I did mention this one last time. So we're going to show off one of the ones I mentioned. So this is one of my favorite colors and one of my favorite names for a paint. Deathless Metal. So this is like a super brown metallic color we can apply it to a little piece of plastic so people can see what this looks like check out my cool whoa yeah. super white it's got a little green undertone it's like a super brown metallic it's a very cool color It's hard to work around this little dude. Let's get rid of that guy. It's hard to see on this monitor, this camera, but you get the idea. Looks like there's 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 brown in there, like you were saying, a little bit of green, maybe mm -hmm. maybe a hint of some red in there. Yeah, it's a very red brown. Looks like a like a like a really really deep. Maybe like a perfect shade for like something really. So rusty they know the names corroded. of all six. Yeah, the, the, all six have been named. They have all. Do you want to show another one? Well, I, I was going to ask you what one? um what were some of like the the obvious uses for deathless metal. So um, I mean I think it's a great ba Iron Kingdoms man right. So I think it's a great base color to do like your uh, like crody old pipes and uh stuff like that it'd be great for like the undercoat of metal for your some of your more beat up warjack styles and stuff like that um it, it's that right it's a dark brown metal color so anywhere you could use that um warjacks uh your terrain pieces like you know if you're doing like a five fingers uh game board it would definitely come in super useful for things like that. Oh, it's Doug Hamilton. Hi, Doug. Dougie Doug. So, I, I really like the color. I think it's super useful. Doug, while you're in the chat, there uh, you should you should throw out which uh, which of your uh, which of the Grimkin models that you sculpted was your favorite to sculpt. Yeah, for people who don't know, Doug Hamilton is a Privateer Press sculptor. Yeah, so the lead sculptor. Lead sculptor. 
I'm going to go ahead and say I'm betting he says the witch word. I, I'm betting you're right, but we'll see. And he's going to say something else just because, just to prove me wrong, because that's that's our relationship. Me and my Doug, we got a relationship. Or he's just going to go out of left field and he's going to be like, Gorshade 4. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I might put my money on a Legion model of some sort. Right, but I did specify Grimkin. Oh, true. <laughs> so apparently the only one that he did was the Dryad Tree Guy, as he puts it. That's the Witchwood. <laughs> Which is the Witchwood. <laughs> is that the only one he did? I thought he did another. Fooled you. Also, Dallas, he's your favorite city to visit. He's you're his favorite city to visit. <sighs> oh, Doug. All right, I want to show another color. All right, we'll wait. I'll ask. I'll show another color after I answer three more real questions. You heard it, folks. Get those questions in. Uh, so, Tony, since you'll know the answer to this one, Stefan asks, uh, how much of Lock and Load are we streaming for the folks that will be at home? Um, a lot of it. It's uh, Every single pretty, second. Pretty constant streaming uh, Friday through Sunday. I believe, if I have my schedule correct in my head, Friday we are doing Boar's Gate. Yeah, oh, yeah. All oh, day. Yeah, yeah that's, that's like an all eight day event. hours or less if, if they go quick. But yeah, I, we've been playtesting that downstairs. Mm -hmm. It's going to be dope. Big deal. Um, after that, we are going to be live streaming the Iron Painter, which I know Dallas doesn't really like to do. It's certainly not one of his favorite things at Lock and Load. It's literally the worst night of my life. Yeah, it's terrible. He has no fun ever. Don't, don't listen to him. It's his favorite. Uh, and then on... Saturday, we are doing the Iron Gauntlet Championships yes, all day. We are. So four rounds of that, I believe, all the way up through the finals to crown another champion. Uh, we have some staff games on Sunday. And then some staff, uh, some mixed uh, Iron Arena staff games on Sunday. And somewhere in there, the... Uh, the I believe 2 to 4 p.m. 2 on to 4 p.m. is uh, the finals for Penny Arcade Presents War Machine. Yep, so the, the top two players from the, uh, from the Penny Arcade guys that are playing a tournament right now every Tuesday um, will be battling for ultimate supremacy in that context. And then Dallas, uh, I, I'm not really God, seeing... stop excitement. not seeing many on there, but uh, I might be wrong just from the angle. What kind, of, what kind of feather action do the Murder Crows have going on? Are we going to see those on maybe the next stream? So, oh, these will be done, like, today. Probably. Oh, snap. Uh, so the backs are not really feathers. Um, I really like the design of these because they're, they're crow, um, they're crow reminiscent. So the backs are more like this tattered cloth. And you can see this one's a little dynamic, so it's a little hard to see. Let's show this guy. So you can see like kind of layers of tattered cloth. Oh, yeah. That's great. Together. So traditionally, like my recipe, so this is a good good question because I want to talk about this a little bit. Because last week we had, or in the, the past couple of streams, we've had several people asking me about cloth and how you make cloth look like cloth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so this is a good example. So traditionally when I paint crow feathers, I use cold black, um, Thamar black, and frostbite. Um, maybe underbelly blue. And those are very bright, poppy, vibrant colors. And it gets that iridescent kind of look, that shimmy, like, shimmy yeah. look. I like the underbelly blue. That's the one I used uh, on my Lilith. I used, yeah. uh, I used the, uh, the uh, beaten purple. Uh-huh. Uh, yep, those are good. Umber, umber and the underbelly blue. Yeah, so the, all those poppy, bright colors are very vivid and very striking, and it makes that crow feather look like crow feathers. This isn't feathers. This is cloth. And I'm imagining this isn't very good new cloth, right? This is pretty 
I'm imagining this like very that, that cloth has seen some mud puddles. Right. Yeah, and crows are oily and not uh, hygienic at all. Well, particularly murder crows, right? Well, yeah, because there's who knows what's on this coat. Oh yeah, that's, all kinds of. Well, the inside's not. That's not red cloth. No, no, <laughs> that's that's murder. That's that's Lieutenant Howell. <laughs> Lieutenant. <laughs> that's just Stevens. No. That's just, that's just, I got Jerry all up in my cloak. Jerry all in his cloak. Um, so for this cloth, what I did is I mixed my Thamar black and my coal black traditionally for crow feathers. And then I just added hammerfall khaki into that. And I get, you get this like more, um, dead gray blue color. And now this still needs to be highlighted. This is just me blocking in these, uh, uh, broad highlights to get this going. So this was all painted in Thamar Black, of course. Everything gets painted Thamar Black even after uh, base coat or after um, priming. Um, I'll paint a lot of elements in Thamar Black. And so this was all painted Thamar Black. And then this uh, coal black, Thamar Black, Hammerfall khaki, dull, desaturated gray. And then when I go to highlight this, I'll do the same thing. I'll start desaturating those colors so I don't have that that shimmy, uh, iridescent feel of a crow feather, but more the dead, dry, black cloak of a murder crow. A and, crow built. And Carl, murder. Steve's Steve's pretty much on the on the right track there. But the, the, the follow-up question to that, Carl, is do you want a more warm red-purple or are you looking for a cooler red-purple for your Menoth? I'm assuming warm, but... Oh, wait, on what? On his uh, on his menoth when he's painting the red and purple on there, he's is this a question to... for me? Yes, he's uh, he's highlighting and it ends up looking like kind of cocky and chalky. What is he highlighting? Not really with? vivid. So yeah, that's why I was asking the follow up question: is what are you what are you highlighting with? Kind of to James's point, and then also uh, whether or not you're going for the the warm red and purple or the kind of a cool red purple. The is he using the recipe out of the protectorate of menoth? book sanguine base then highlight sanguine base and sanguine highlight that should yield you a very red vivid color and then to highlight further you add um minoth white highlight to that if he's adding maro white to it you're going to get that chalky right. dry look if you add minoth white highlight minoth white highlight has a little bit of yellow which works mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the reds of sanguine uh sanguine highlight or, yeah. I hope I answered that question right. I hope I, I think so. I, think I the, hope I understand the question. I think the only other thing I would throw in there is is if it's looking, you know, like kind of cocky or too thick or, you know, chalky or anything like that is uh, uh, go with thinner paint on your layers and build up to it so that you're not getting it either too clumpy or just too... What's the word? I'm yeah, if he's using the recipe from the from the Mark II book, it should just go sanguine base, and then you add exile blue for your shadow, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then for your highlights, you go sanguine base mixed with sanguine highlight, then go sanguine highlight, and then you go sanguine highlight mixed with minoth white highlight, and you just use that as just the very just edge. Tiny, it's tiny. just these little tiny edge highlights, and it makes it really sharp and poppy. If and then the other thing I would throw in is is make sure that the previous layer is dry before moving on to the next layer. Yeah. And that's how you'll avoid Whoops, it from looking sorry, too pink. Sorry there, T-bone. You you can put that where you want it. And Stefan, you are correct. There is going to be a lock and load Europe in 2018. Lock and load Europe. Coming to your country. Lock and load Europe. Fish and chips. Yeah. That's I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> I did. I want to go back to. Um, uh, I want to go back to Europe and eat the, more chippies. <laughs> I want to go back to uh, chalky paint. Um, if if your paint ends up being chalky, is using a glaze a good way to kind of bring it back down? Yeah, you can glaze over that usually, but it's probably if you're using. A lot of times when I see chalky <laughs> highlights, it's because of. Um, it's because of adding Maro white to the highlight and, and that's, that's not really what you want. 
you got to use a different color to bring up your highlight. Let's just make a pot of this. Good Lord. Being all dainty. What color are you using now? So this is Beast Tide. I'm just going to highlight my highlight my leathers with this. And this is going to be very minimal highlighting. Because it's cloth. I don't want a lot of broad highlights. I want, I want, they're underneath, it's dark. I just want some little spot highlighting to uh, accentuate shape and forms. And then Dallas, I think this question comes up like every time we do a stream or every time we do a video, but it's one of those things that I think needs to be proliferated out there. What is the difference between a glaze and a wash? So a glaze, well, well what do you want to start with? Should we start with the Let's wash? start with the glaze. Let's start, let's start with a, I, I say start with a wash because it typically tends to be the simpler of the two and is a foundation for understanding the glaze. And you know what? Tony's a lot bigger than me and I don't want him to beat me up, so let's start with a wash. <laughs> Tony Konachek, the second most handsome man at Private True Press. He's also the first. I'm sorry, Jack, <laughs> Jack works here. Oh, yeah, That's true. legit. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about a wash. So I made a wash earlier, and a wash is a um, a wash is anything where you just kind of put it over an element with the intended goal to get in the crevices, to get down in the cracks, the nooks, and the crannies. So like if you were to paint this guy's murder face, I'd paint it steel, and then I'd make a black dark wash, and then I'd just wash it over the top. And I'd want to pull off the upper areas. Wow, well, pull off of the upper areas and down into the crevices. That would be the goal of the wash. A glaze is a super, super thin paint where, say I wanted to intensify this red, I would make a glaze of red ink and water. And the goal is to not have it pull up, but just to go over the top in a very even manner to change the tonality. That's the difference between a glaze and a wash. Yeah, that's definitely something that um, I think a lot of beginning painters struggle with. It was certainly something that I struggled with trying to understand the difference between those two. Uh, but working it out, man, it really makes a big difference. It, yeah, it does make a big difference. And I mean, that's what we're here to do is to help out, right? I, I remember way back in the 90s. Let me tell you, kids, you don't know how good you got it. Back in the 90s, like, growing up in the Midwest, there was nobody, there was no way to learn a lot of these techniques. So it was like, I would just hear about it from somebody, and then I try to practice it, but there's no way giving me definitions and stuff like that. So it was really, it took me forever to figure out a glaze and a wash and why they're different and all that. I mean, it's great to, to be able to figure stuff out on your own, but the amount of information that's available now for painting and being able to just get out there, get those answers and start applying them to what you're doing is just going to skyrocket your painting. Exactly. And it's like, it's not really, the big thing is like, it's not really, it's not like giving me, giving you the answer is going to, like, you still have to put it to practice. You still got to like, um, like you might now, somebody out there is just like going, oh, that's the difference between a glaze and a wash. And they're having an epiphany, but then they're going to sit there and they're going to practice it on a couple of practice models. And they're going to feel the difference. Like they're going to see and, and experience the difference on a model. And then they're going to have another epiphany and they're going to be like, oh my gosh. Like, and it's just going to open up. It's just every door opens up eight more, right? Yeah. Well, I always, I like to think about it as a toolbox, right? You, you're learning these techniques and, and they have, um, some specific applications that, that are very common. But what happens is the more of these you learn as you paint more models, rather than just having a, I use this technique for this, I use this technique for this and this way, you end up uh, encountering your own challenges on a miniature. And the more of those techniques you are armed with, the more you can combine those techniques to solve your particular challenge. So you'll find all sorts of ways um, to use glazes and washes and all those techniques to solve your problems that that somebody else isn't going to tell you how to do. Right. 
or you're just going to see new like this is how you know you come up with new ways to just approach painting like i mean i know i've had in the past two years like i've had so many new ideas be brought to me and like i've experienced i'm like oh yeah thanks for that technique and then i like i practice it practice practice it and then i become proficient at it and then i change it like because because of this other technique i learned like and you just start incorporating all these and then everything just becomes easier like it just becomes quicker and more efficient Doop, doop. Little tiny highlights. This is just because I want this leather to be very dark, but I still have to give it form. I still have to let the viewer understand what kind of texture is going on in these shadows. And then Dallas, when you when you wrap up the studio models or even your home models, uh, what what do you use to seal them to protect them for later? I just use a dull coat. Just a dull coat. Yeah. Well. Especially in the studio, um, imagine like a convergence model, right? You paint a convergence model, it's all in metallic. And then it has to go into a photo box and be photographed. If it's too shiny. If it's too shiny, it's just going to blow day. out. Yeah. It's just going to blow out all the, all the photography and no one's going to be able to see the model. So um, a trick, um, and I use this on my, I use this to great effect on my uh, tabletop stuff for my armies, is you paint the, the metal um and at home like i do like a base coat wash like i'm done boop done base coat wash you know in the studio it might be base coat shadow shadow maybe another shadow highlight highlight then you dull coat all that and then you do a final highlight and it actually increases that metallicity it makes it look more metallic because you're just getting so much different types of contrast going on that it makes it look more realistic um for uh, tabletop, it's really great because you're tr really tricking the eye to think more is going on on the model than actually is. So it's a really great trick to go back and highlight your metals after the dull coat. So there you go, Martin. Dull coat and then a final highlight. Yep, pop that final highlight on there and just b -b 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 boom! Metalocity. Metal. Maximum metalocity in your face. It's the flavor you want. So that was we, three we, questions. Yeah, We've definitely so answered three questions. I owe, I owe people a paint. You do. That was like six. I think we have to do two. Should we do two? We should do two. Can we, uh, do, should we take a poll of which color they want to see? If they can remember the names. I'll give them the names. I'll be okay, nice. So, so they've seen the piggy purple. Yep. They've seen they've Deathless seen the Metal. Deathless Metal, which has the coolest name ever. Sickly Skin. Is, I love that color. Um, Bogren Brown. Bog Moss. And you can kind of interpret, like, what about color these are. Um, Grave Digger Denim, which I love this color. It's uh, a great color color and then it's my, one i've been waiting for dude this color is it, it it's marvelous it's great for I'm trenchers it's it great for yep <laughs> it, but it's also really good for uh scorn like because you can, oh yeah legit the the scorn black yeah like um this is a really good color to mix into your thamar to bring it up and, start well, and all their pachyderms and stuff that's mm -hmm. also a really good one for like the shade or even like a yeah, early base coat oh yeah it's super good and then one of the greatest names ever ever mediocre agreed that's uh one of the top names elliot i'm gonna i'm gonna cheat a little bit as far as your question so elliot asked uh for for one of the friday videos and i, I think this is a great idea is uh is basically doing a video kind of on color theory. So like, you know, like what colors work well together? Things like, will this blue work with this red or would orange be better? Yada, yada. Like doing one of those videos on just some general color theory on how to get things to, you know, like what things work well together to achieve certain effects and then which things contrast really well, I think would be uh, a good kind of addendum to that one. 
So Elliot, great question. Um, it basically, it's it's all color theory and it's it's practice, right? So it's that it's that uh, second P of of P three. It is. It's patience, practice, perseverance, and that practice part. Like sometimes it's just, sometimes it's just taking a piece of. I don't have. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I did not bring my external hard drive. Um, it's just taking colors and painting them on a piece of uh, sketch paper or on an old model and just kind of getting a like just testing stuff out like there's nothing wrong with that i do that all the time like if i have an idea for, on how to approach something and i'm like thinking about like you know what if i added this color to this i'll just put it on a piece of notebook or a piece of, piece of sketch paper and just play with the color and see what happens in a color theory video oh my god we could do like what tony 475 hours of color theory video yeah one for each color no easy yeah like that's that's a huge subject that is a huge huge subject and that's why i mentioned the practice yeah. thing is because the the reality is 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 sometimes you'll get inspired and maybe it didn't work out for what you wanted it for but it might work super awesome for another application and let's right? be honest like all these videos we've done we've talked about color theory Oh yeah, during yeah. them, color theory, contrast. So I mean, you have the whole library up on YouTube. So you, if you have a specific thing that you're looking to do, a lot of them are named rather appropriately. So, like for example, last week's P3 video. If you're wondering how to achieve a good, you know, like kind of olive slash mage hunter green, you're gonna get a pretty good overview there. Like I'm not trying to get out of the video, Elliot. No, but I mean, we could do one on basics. Right. Yeah. Like just like some oh, yeah. like, you know, like di discussing the difference between like going a little bit deeper than we had before on like the difference between warm and cool. Sure. Yeah. I think color theory for me was definitely one of the, the keys to learn that just launched uh, my minis painting to a new level. And it's one of those that's like, I admit it's a little intimidating at first. Um, yeah, but that because it's not it, it's not a technique so much as a philosophy, and so yep, practicing and putting it to work and studying it is how you learn it. But man, once it's in there, everything changes. Well, and as was mentioned on the previous stream, you know, people can I asking, admit I've never taken a color theory class? No, but one of the things that you that no. you do. Right, that was mentioned rather heavily on last week's stream is use reference stuff, right? Oh yeah, man. Look at look at pictures, or if you have like a you know like an actual physical representation of something like a rock from outside or whatever, look at it. Like turn that thing in the light and really look. It's not just a gray rock, right? There's blues in there. There's yellows in there. There's all kinds of crazy colors on objects that you might not initially see and that'll actually help a lot when you're trying to achieve a certain effect that's an interesting uh thing like i've talked to people about so let's try to do this it's like this piece of black cloth like this is this is my black hoodie um let's put some wrinkles in there so the trick especially go, like go to a car dealer and look at a car and try to train your brain to focus in on just this color or just this color and let all this other stuff blend out like i you can actually like uh you know uh when you watch a movie and you see the director come on screen and he's just and he like frames the picture with his hands he's just like looking he's like wow this is our gonna be our shot see like uh, apparently we're making 1930s uh, apparently that is certainly how all directors talk. all directors yeah, talk. See, like, yeah. Yeah, see we're gonna make this movie it's gonna be grand yeah but like do that, like block, block things out. And like, so you can only see like one aspect or one color of, of a, of a, of an object. Cars are great for this. Car, like, oh my gosh, we walk by this car dealer every day uh, on break. And I'm always like looking at, at the colors in the cars, especially like the yellow Lamborghinis. Cause like, it's like, you notice like there's pea green, like, like, like pea green, like baby pea green in the, P-E-A. <laughs> right. I, I got it. Uh, green in these yellow cars. And so, like, if you use your brain and, like, you can use your hand and start focusing, you can see all these different colors and, like, in stuff. And, like, train yourself to do that. And then you can apply that knowledge to your miniature painting. 
I'm getting all up on my high horse. All right, let's show a color. Which one are we showing? Let's go with the skin. Sickly skin. I love this color. It's super good. And it's funny because, like, I mean, this one's actually probably even easier than your hoodie to show the the difference in, like, the pigments. Yeah, you're going to see some colors. So, like. Because initial glance. Oh, oh it's, it's all so super white. white. Except it's totally so not. So white. It's totally not white, though. There's, like, green in there. It's and... green and yellow, but it's super, super, super light. Um, let's see if we can. There we go. Put a little shadow on there. Uh, this color was actually used to paint the stone face of the heretic. Which is, I think, my favorite model from the Grimkin right Yeah, now. it's pretty cool. Um, it, shading this with Bastion Gray uh, looks really, really beautiful. Um, and it just has, I don't know, I, I don't even think I've even come close to understanding all the applications of this paint. Uh, it's just such a good color. It's such a good paint. Um it's one of my favorite ones coming down the road, but sickly skin. Let's get on the camera. Sickly skin. Well, especially because like uh, one of the things that, that I could totally see doing with it is, is if anything has a really faint, creepy green glow, especially like on anything that has a very light colored fabric. It's going to be a great highlight. Yeah, I now I have mixed it with Thamar Black, and it looks really interesting. Um, but it's got a lot, and and just a highlight to it, it's a good highlight to uh, Thrall Flesh. Oh yeah, yeah. So you could do like uh, Thrall Flesh, then you could do like your uh, so you could do like Thrall Flesh, then you could do like uh, Sickly Skin, and then you could glaze in like um, Beaten Purple and some uh, uh, Green. Pick your green like. Probably not Thornwood, but maybe Battle Dress, something like that. And you can get a really nice uh, zombie skin tone going on there. I think you promised people a second color as Did well. Did I? Oh, man. Yeah, one more. Let's, let's go with that denim, man. Let's that go with denim. stuff is it's delicious. Denim. It's a, such a smooth color. Gravedigger denim. Burp. So, as you can see... This is Grave Digger Denim. It's a nice, smooth blue. Um, actually, this color is, if you, uh, it's very reminiscent to uh, the Signar Mark II uh, book. Mm -hmm. there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a recipe for denim. We mix yep. some uh, Exile Blue and some Great Coat Gray together, I believe. This yep. is that color, basically. Like, it's basically that color. It's just, it's just instead of mixing it up, you got it in the pot. You're yep, ready and, to go. Oh, man. The blending with that on Exile Blue, it, it, it's going to be oh, so delicious. It looks really good with uh, Exile Blue. It actually works well with some browns as well. You can play with it. Um, the other thing really I good really blue really color. want to use that on is, uh, is uh, undercoats for my Legion. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. To try to get that really dark glacial effect with the Exile Blue and some of the other colors. Legion skin tones. What are we working on? Let's, I'm done with that leather. I'm done. Biggity bop. Let's paint his wraps. So I'm going to take some gun core brown and make another wash. Look at this. Jesse, the, the new paints, uh, the Grimkin colors, I believe, will be out late July. The Wicked Assortment. And we should have some of them at lock and load. I don't know if we'll have pre-releases at Origins yet. That's a maybe. Formula P3 presents the Wicked Assortment. Six colors coming to your town. And one ink. And an ink. Bam. What is Dallas wearing today? He's wearing jean shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Same as most days. <laughs> I got in trouble for wearing my sandals out in the... Because I have to go over to the warehouse a lot. They're like, you got... 
But you got to quit wearing sandals. Yeah, I've been kicked out of the warehouse for wearing open-toed shoes before, too. I'm like, but I like wearing my sandals. I'm an artist. Carl, they should actually be up pretty soon on privateerpress.com, and then uh, they'll show up other places soon after that as far as uh, the, the images from the solicitations. Biggity bow bow bow. I got one more thing to show off. You have two. Two things to show off. Huh? Haven't seen the mediocre or the... Uh, no. The, uh, the... I have one more thing to show off. Oh! Oh, oh the secret goodness. Oh, Dallas brought Stuff something that, fun uh, with him. I Stuff did. that people might have heard about yesterday when the devs were talking to Jackson. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I decided to bring that along with me if people want to see it it's one of my most favorite things in the world right now like ever like ever uh chris yes there is there is a back order on the uh on the primer um i i know it's coming really soon i just don't have an exact date yeah, for when it coming. gets to the distributors and whatnot but it's on its way and we're back. <laughs> it's intermission. No, uh, Devonian, it is not Siege 2. That That's not the uh, the little treat that we have to show you. But, oh, uh, is my boy Devin here? But oh. let's just say he's in theme. Speaking of Siege, uh, darker skin tones. Uh-huh. What, what, what do you like to go with there? Um, I usually use Battlefield Brown as my base coat. And then you can add a little, uh, I'm sorry, I had to pull this off to get the underside of his crow beaks. Um, then I usually play around with some, uh, beaten purple in the shadows. Okay. Um, darker skin tones tend to have, uh, like Caucasian skin tones and light skin tones tend to have green. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you look at the skin, uh, you, I definitely have a lot of green in my skin tone. Um, but darker skin tones tend to have some purples sometimes, not all the times, of course. Um, sure. Just a general, general rule. Um, and then you can shade down with some umbral umber makes a nice rich uh, shade for darker skin tones and then for the highlights you actually go up pretty high on dark skin tone um, but keep it minimal I, 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 that's the big trick because it goes high pretty high but keep it minimal and so to clarify you want the highlights to be bright in intensity but you don't want it to cover too much area. Yeah, yeah. So use sparingly. And I usually just mix some... Um, I usually just mix some Midland Flesh into the Battlefield Brown or Idrian Flesh or Cardic Flesh. It kind of depends on what you're looking Depending for. Depending on what kind of so like, final color you want it to Yeah. Definitely, once again, references, references, references. Always have a reference in front of you. Um, and kind of look at what you're trying to replicate. Different skin tones. There, there's no wrong way. There, yeah. There's no wrong yeah. skin tone. Because the breadth of humanity is a variation it's of skin tones. Just about tones. every shade from Everything. A to B. I mean, there's, there's pale skin people with uh, really green skin like me. There's... Uh, pale skin people that have like these really rich brown shades like there's magentas or magentas your yeah your shadows are very red like especially in the crease of your uh elbow there it's very very magenta so there's there's no wrong colors it's just more of the application of colors i guess does that make sense 
That feels like such a cop out RT answer. No, it's no, it's it's, the, it's a legit it's answer. The, it's the right answer. There's no uh, there's no single recipe for for painting flesh tones. Yeah, get in there and experiment. Use so reference. You, you mentioned Idrian flesh, Cardic flesh, Midland yeah, flesh for the um, highlights. A uh, couple of those things. Any 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 chance there's any other flesh colors on the horizon that you're aware of? Oh, 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 oh. gonna take that as a maybe. <laughs> Mm. Get me in trouble. What what you what you hunting for there, Dad? I'm looking for my bastion gray. Bastion gray. I thought I pulled it out. There's Crixbane highlight. I can usually locate these from 30 paces. Uh oh. That's the one. Ah, that's trouble highlight. You know what? Can't find it. Don't eat it. It's not in there for sure. Nah, I don't need it. I'm going to make it up. I'm going to play some jazz. So I'm going to take some iron hole and blurk it all over the bloody place because I'm not used to the camera rig. And I'm going to take some of that Beast Hide I used earlier and mix that in there just to kind of desaturate that. Is that approximately Bastion Gray? No, not really. But it just doesn't matter. I'm, I just need a shade for this, and this is going to work. Like you said, he's playing jazz. Playing jazz. Skibbly doo wop making a color. Biddle biddle the bow bow. Tony's like, don't do that. Okay. All right. All right, if you guys have any last minute questions, now's the time to get them in. Are so we going to show this? We can you want to show this? Answer them. Yeah, yeah, we're going to show that. Okay, I'm going to show it right now. <laughs> Goodbye, Murder Crow. Okay, so this is literally one of my most favorite things right now. Tony, drum roll, please. This is the dog. The little trencher dog. Little the patrol dog. dog. Or I, patrol dog, yeah. I have named him. Sergeant, Sergeant Trevor McInera, the goodest of boys. The goodest of boys. The goodest of boys. Word. And the new Pope said dogs go to heaven, so even if he's removed from play. So you got this cute little dog named Sergeant Trevor McInera, the goodest of boys. I mean, that's what I'm going to name him. And he's like, look how diligent he is. Just a diligent little pupper. And he's got the rule foxhole buddy. And he is. He's just a little buddy. He's a little buddy. He's the goodest of boys. And Brian, you nailed it. Like the that's kind of the point of these videos is yes, they're they're fun and informative and stuff like that. But we do want it to be something you watch while you're painting so you feel like someone's there with you and hanging out. Like that's what it's all about is hanging out, paint some dudes. Hang out, paint some dudes. Hang out, paint some dudes. Oh, paint some a, dudes. What a great time to talk about a challenge that you're having too, because it's in oh. the moment, right then. Yeah. Oh. Ask Dallas. I have hit a speed bump. What do I do? There you go. That's why I'm here. I'm here to help. My, people go, what's your favorite part about painting miniatures? And my honest answer is always... Pancakes. Okay, well, <laughs> pancake paint jams are the top of the list. But helping other people achieve their painting goals. Like, I don't want to be the best painter. I want to help you become the best painter you want to be. Legit. And since Hungerford's going to take my job, I'm going to take his job. Since he's going to be the best painter at Privateer Press now, apparently. <laughs> so I'm going to steal his job. I, I, th I think you have some time on that. <laughs> Love you, Hungerford. <laughs> Those are my goals now. To help people become the best painters they can be. And to steal Hungerford's job because he's stealing mine. We'll see what kind of dogs are in the future, Carl. I'm not sure just yet. 
the goodest of dogs. Because they're all good boys. Isn't that right, Zaners? Borf, borf. Bork, bork, bork. So this is that gray color, and I'm just putting this in the shadows of our straps. Your jazzy gray. More jazzy gray. Alrighty, Dallas, and as we as we head towards the the closing of this episode, Are we done? we're getting we're getting there. I think we got about like three minutes left, somewhere in that ballpark. All right. Uh, what kind of kind of parting thoughts do we want to make sure that that folks are taking away from this episode? From this episode, oh man, nothing specific from this episode except for the overarching theme of the practice, patience, practice, perseverance, and pancakes. Pancakes. Like, don't like. Everybody gets frustrated. Everybody, everybody has mistakes. It's okay. If you're on a plateau, if you're like at that moment of, I don't feel like I'm getting any better, that's actually a good thing because a plateau just means you're learning something. Oh, absolutely. And Stefan, 100%. Uh, I, I sit in the, in the background in all of these videos, but the amount of things I learn just by watching Dallas explain them is insane. And if you're then, actually uh, putting Dallas, those you, techniques to you, practice. You owe people one more color. Do I? Yeah, there's uh they, they haven't seen the mediocre yet. All right, let's show them mediocre. And then we'll we'll close on that, folks. We're gonna close on mediocre. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna end, end mediocre. That's right, gang. It is straight up mediocre, which is a great color. Compliments <laughs> awesome name. Moldy ochre <laughs> very well. Mm-hmm. You can see it's a very, I mean, it, it is its name. It's a very meaty ochre color. Yep, yep. There's, uh, there's definitely what looks to be some reds in there, yeah. a little bit of brown. Very. It's a very yellow brown. This will really help you uh, paint your yellow color scheme. Um, mm. uh, put this over top of a base coat of, like, I would like to do a base coat of, like, maybe Guncore brown, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. and then build the base and then layer this right over top of that. And you have a great foundation for a great yellow color scheme. Somewhere between what looks to be kind of a, a deli mustard and a yellow mustard. Yeah, oh, yeah, this is yeah. a very rich... Yeah. It's a spicy mustard! Yeah, don't paint your sandwich with it, though. Do not put that on your Sammy. Is that it? Was, yep. And then last question, was that used on the dread rots? Yes. There you go. Alrighty, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next time. Get your paint on. Thank you.